Uh, we spoke earlier about a bridge. What better bridge could there be than these three presentations uh, to hear the voices of the next generation? We have carefully selected two of the most brilliant people to come forth and speak the truth, to give you their view, to give you their passion, to give you a pathway toward how we can deal with these issues as we move forward to train the next generation, to enable the next generation, to teach the next generation. We heard before the lunch hour Edward Mossberg. Indeed, we have become witnesses to the witness. And who will tell the stories when all the survivors are unfortunately gone? We, the witnesses, and these two wonderful leaders who will have the opportunity to share with you as witnesses what they believe we should be teaching to and about the next generation. Please come forward. We have both uh, Brooke Goldstein, March of the Living alumna and director of the Lawfare Project, and Elizabeth Butner, Polish doctoral student from Jagiellonian University. We welcome you both. Dear honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's hard for me to do this speech after this speech we just said beforehand, but I'm going to try my best. Um, well, I was introduced as a person that would speak about uh, the future, and this is also this legacy. That's what I want to dedicate my short speech to. Um, well, we've come together here in Krakow, Poland, a place which is very, very close uh, to Auschwitz. And uh, you, guests from all over the world, um, in many cases with a Jewish background or with an African background, um, with also the experience of a genocide. And myself, I'm a PhD student here at Jagiellonian University, dealing with the Holocaust, dealing with Auschwitz as well, especially. And I'm a German native, and this gives let's say, also a personal reason for me to, to engage in this whole discourse and to come to conferences like this and to dedicate my time to, um, to work um, on Holocaust education for the future. And uh, this legacy, this respons responsibility, in my opinion, um, obliges myself and the whole young generation to be courageous. I think that we have to try to link the past with the future. We have to listen to the survivors, but we also have to try to not so much um, think about guilt, but rather about responsibility, and uh, to replace the word shock, or the lack of uh, possibility to believe what we see and what we hear about Auschwitz, uh, with hope and with respons responsibility especially. This is not easy, especially after uh, a visit in Auschwitz or when you're going to be there tomorrow for those who go there for the first time. But anyway, I consider it to be important and uh, to, to, uh, that, that it, this is our duty. Um, well, so I want to dedicate um, the rest of my speech to Holocaust education and to the future of it. And for this purpose, I would like to share my own experiences with you as a volunteer translator of youth meetings at the Galicia Jewish Museum here in Krakow. Um, well, I'm translating meetings um, of people, of young people from all over the world, from all continents, uh, with Holocaust survivors, with Polish concentration camp survivors, and also with Gentile Polish writers among the nations. And uh, I'm doing this work for over four years, four years now, and uh, I just, I'm just convinced of its importance for these young people who have come, come to the museum and join us. Um, the majority are very young, and for, for them, the meeting with a real survivor, a real Holocaust, real Auschwitz survivor, is um, one of the highlights of their trips. And no matter if they're Jews, if they're Christians, Muslims, atheists, or worshippers of other religions, during the time that we spend together at the museum, um, these differences completely keys to matter, you know, they're just tears, they're, they're just questions, they're just gratefulness, no matter where our audience comes from. 
And uh, however, we, and especially when I say um, we, as I me, myself, as a moderator and translator, but also um, as for the survivors, we never end our meetings with history and with the horrors, which are discussed, of course, but uh, with messages, with personal messages of our survivors um, to, um, to our audience. And I would just like to quote uh, the final messages of our three survivors that I'm currently translating to share them with you. The first person that I would like to quote is Mrs. Lydia Maximovich, who is a Russian child survivor of Auschwitz-Birkenau, where she spent over 14 months at the age of four years. And she always ends her speech with, a, as I feel, very powerful appeal to her auditory. Let me quote her. I want you to know that the shape of the future is up to you. Peace is nothing that you can ever take for granted. In a couple of years, your generation will be responsible for how our world will look like. And I want you to remember what you have seen at the Auschwitz Museum and also what you have heard, heard from me today about my life. I want you to assume responsibility and to stand up whenever it is necessary so that a tragedy like the Holocaust will never ever happen again." End of quote. And uh, we have a second lady that is coming to the museum. That's, that is M Mrs. Monika Goldwasser, a Jewish survivor from the vicinity of Krakow, who was rescued by, by Polish people during the war and adopted and grew up in a Polish family. And uh, let me also quote her um, appeal to the audience. The most important thing in life is to be a good and decent person. Without good people, I wouldn't have survived. A baby, because she was a baby back then, is completely helpless. Help, helpless. It needs decent, courageous people to have a chance to live and to grow up. Please learn this lesson and be good to each other and support others whenever they may need your help. Accept each other, do not bully other people for who they are or where they come from." End of quote. And the last lady I would like to honor by quoting her here is Mrs. Mirosława Groszczyńska, a Polish uh, Gentile um, living in Krakow for all her life, who uh, was awarded a medal Writers Among the Nations about 25 years ago. Um, because together with her family, her parents and her sister, they hid a 13-year-old Jewish girl for over two years and saved her life. And that Jewish lady is still alive in Israel and living there with her big family. She always ends her story uh, with the following sentences. I quote, my family and I always knew one thing. If somebody is in need around you, you have the sacred duty to help. There's no question about this. And this is also what our Christian faith was about. And please believe me, me and my family, we never reg regretted our decision." End of quote. Uh, in times of uncounted monuments, commemoration celebrations, and a rising number of Holocaust history museums, also here in Poland, um, I think that we have to make sure to communicate to the young generation that um, all these um, attempts to commemorate, that they have a sense and that they have a message for the future which never ever becomes outdated. Um, and even if the last voices of survivors fall silent, we must ensure that message to be transmitted to the following generation. Zero tolerance for discrimination the readiness to stand up against injustice, and a 100% awareness of potential dangers for peace, just as we discussed for a whole day today. And just like the old German proverb says, Wehret den Anfängen, which means beware of the beginnings. And I think that now in 2016, this message is ever so timely and relevant in Poland, but all around Europe, and probably also all around the rest of the world. Thank you very much for inviting me, um, a member of the younger generation in Europe, to address this esteemed audience. And thank you for your efforts to learn and to teach the lessons of the two Nurembergs, so that my generation and also the generation of my children um, may be spared the repetition of uh, what happened in the past. And I promise that's the only thing I can do, that I will do whatever I can, um, even if it's not much to do that to accomplish this goal. Thank you. Thank you.